Coverage. Stuart, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Maria. The world is watching this. It is a defining moment, certainly in the debate over Iran, and it's likely getting hold of nuclear weapons at some point in the future. It is also a defining moment in American politics. Is there really bipartisan support for Israel, or is it concentrated amongst Republicans? The world is watching this. However, many Democrats and the President and the Vice President and members of the government will not be watching Prime Minister Netanyahu's pro, uh, speech, which comes up in just a few minutes. Our tally, according to The Hill, 56 House and Senate Democrats will not be in attendance at this speech. The U.S. Ambassador to Israel will not be in attendance at this speech. No cabinet member will be in attendance at this speech. Vice President Biden is overseas, and the President himself is in the White House, where he will conduct very shortly a video conference with other world leaders about Ukraine. He is studiously not watching this presentation by Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, this, the backdrop to this is as follows. News this morning that an Iranian general is leading Iranian troops in Iraq on the assault on Tikrit. Now, this weighs heavily on the debate over whether Iranians should or should not get the nuclear weapons which they apparently seek, and it weighs on whether or not America should be talking to the Iranians at this particular moment in time. It also comes on the backdrop of Iran clearly working hand in glove with Al Qaeda. That was uncovered in documents at the Osama bin Laden compound, but only recently acknowledged. Iran has worked hand in glove with Al Qaeda, and Iranian troops are now in Iraq assaulting Tikrit. UN inspectors have been barred from doing a full look at. Iranian nuclear installations. That news came out just a couple of days ago. So, it is a very much a defining moment. What you're looking at right now is Speaker Boehner awaiting the arrival of Prime Minister Netanyahu in the chamber. Previously, we've seen all the senators arrive, except for some Democrats. And they're all gathered to hear the speech from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel. This is a big moment in politics and in world affairs is about to happen. Before he makes his speech, I think I'm right in saying this, he will be presented with a bust of Winston Churchill. Netanyahu presented with a bust of Winston Churchill. Um, he is now making his way into the chamber, and he's about to begin speaking. That will be momentarily, just moments from now. I want to bring in Zudi Jassa, who is joining us for commentary on this speech. Zudi Jassa is, uh, he is in fact the uh, American Islamic Forum for Democracy president and is the author of the book Battle for the Soul of Islam. Dr. Jassa, you know pretty much what we think uh, Netanyahu is about to say. He's about to say, do not trust the Iranians and don't negotiate with them at this point in time. As a practicing Muslim, do you support Prime Minister Netanyahu? not only as a Muslim, but as a, as a Syrian American realizes that Syria has become what it is today, the evil that's being perpetrated in the name of Assad and Iran against a, a genocide. So like you said, the Iranians are working hand in glove with both sides of evil, Al-Qaeda and with Assad. So anyone who, who believes in the future, the existential threat against evil, must support those like America, like Israel, who are standing strong against the evil of Iran. And we can't allow them to thump their chests against us. We must understand. And it's important for us to listen to Prime Minister Netanyahu now and the American people directly to hear what's at stake, because our president is not letting us know. There have been negotiations going on, Stuart, for years, and we have no idea what's being compromised. And then we're sort of going to be handed it. And meanwhile, just yesterday, Stuart, a cleric in Iran said that the black flag of Islam will fly above the White House. That's from the Revolutionary Guard. So they're not, this appeasement is not working. And we need leaders like Prime Minister Netanyahu to let us know the reality of what's at stake. May I ask, uh, how, what proportion of American Muslims would be in full agreement with you? I, I suspect you're in a very, very small minority amongst American Muslims. Are you? Well, I think, Stuart, let's, let's separate this out. 
the agreement of the threat of Iran, I think the vast majority of American Muslims hate their theocracy, believe it to be evil, and want to see the Green Revolution win regime change and the victory of, of good over evil, which is the Khomeinist regime, the jihadist. Now, the anti-Semitism, the, the conspiracy theories about Israel, unfortunately, dominate the, the Muslim or Islamist media, if you will, so that clouds their ability to be vocal and defend uh, Netanyahu's uh, position, with which I believe most Muslims agree with, vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Um, thanks very much, Dr. Jass. I'll get back to you in just a moment. The chamber is filling up, as you can see. Prime Minister Netanyahu will make his appearance very shortly. He will walk in, walk down the aisle, he will take the podium and deliver a speech which is of great importance. Speaker Boehner has had a brief meeting with him before going into the chamber. Speaker Boehner says that the demand for tickets to be present at this speech is ten times the normal level. But as we said previously, many House and Senate Democrats will not be there and President Obama is making a very studious attempt to say that he is not even going to watch the speech. To say that the White House is not happy about this speech would be an understatement. The President, in fact, is organizing a video conference with other world leaders, and they're going to discuss Ukraine. That video conference begins at 11.30 this morning, 25 minutes from now, precise to the time when Netanyahu will be in the middle of his speech. Now this is, as I've said before, a defining moment for America, for Israel and for Iran. One brief side note on Prime Minister Netanyahu. Some of you may remember the raid on Entebbe. Now that's when Israeli troops went to Entebbe, which is the airport for Kampala in Uganda, and they rescued hostages. Only one Israeli soldier was killed in that operation and that was Benjamin Netanyahu's older brother. So, but, so Netanyahu has a clear stake in this. He has great feeling for this. And it is likely to be a very impassioned speech. It is possible, I do not know, but it is possible that Prime Minister Netanyahu will offer new details about what's been going on in the talks between Iran and the United States. If he has some kind of revelation about what's been going on that would clearly be a blockbuster, but we do not know exactly what he is going to say. Zudi, come back, please. Yes. Is this speech being watched closely, almost universally, by the Muslims of this world? Well, absolutely. It's interesting, Stuart, that the Saudi uh, newspaper, uh, one of their primary governmental newspapers, had a column yesterday congratulating Prime Minister Netanyahu, congratulating the U.S. Congress for listening to the Prime Minister and taking in the facts and the realities of the threat of Iran. So you'll see many of uh, the Arab leaders, the, the governments that are threatened by Iran, and also reformers beginning to say, you know what, we are sick and tired of the Islamists being given the megaphone and paying attention to them as being the so-called leaders and ignoring the governments that really are allies of the West and reformers that really have the future of the Middle East at heart. So I think it's very interesting that for those who believe that Muslims somehow would be in favor of Iran or others and not supporting the Prime Minister, I think, is uh, uh, ignoring the reality. Okay, thanks, Dr. Jassa.